It is Python on Hardware News. So we have our newsletter. We're almost up to 9,000 subscribers. So if you haven't already, please go to adafruitdaily.com. It's a completely separate site. The reason we did that is so no one could say, oh, you took my email address from your store and you started subscribing me. Yeah. No, we did not. So a few things. It was Mother's Day. So of course, what do people do on Mother's Day? Build electronics. They build electronics for moms. And so this is a very uh, cool flower pot with flowers that light up and this celebrates Mother's Day. Made with CircuitPython. Um, this is a Mother's Day project using Adafruit MagTag um, and has quotes from Glenn Doyle's book, Untamed. Um, PyCon is going on right now in the um, US. Mm. So virtual. it's a virtual one. Um, Scott was there, Ken Kenny was there. There's like education summit. Yeah, the sprints were 16th to the 18th and then um, it's online. Uh, right now from the 12th to the 15th. Adafruit is a participating sponsor. KiCad was released, a um, bunch of new things in it. A lot of people in our community use that, so please check that out. Uh, you can watch the video on our various video channels. This is running CircuitPython tests and fixing bugs. Jepler did a good video with that. Uh, Anne did a interview with Embedded FM. I was gonna have that as a separate section on yes. our uh, news, but I forgot that it was also added here. So check it out, really good interview. You can find out all sorts of things. Uh, and uh, Anne has, uh, talks about work, tutorials, two books, eight of her products, and then uh, being retired after a 30 year career uh, in engineering with the US Foreign Service. So check it out. She'd have really to tell good. you what you did, but then she'd have to kill you. Yeah, um, deep dive, mentioned that. And then you can just check out a variety of projects from around the web and more. Um, I mentioned the CPython update last week. They've moved things to main. And uh, one of the other cool things was the uh, read the docs for Python uh, is now responsive. Oh. And the neat story about this is a uh, person in the community contributed a pull request to make them responsive because she was pregnant and she was reading the documents on her phone and she said, well, it doesn't scale that well on a phone, so mm. I'll go fix that. Yeah. Cool story and exactly like what you want to hear in a community, it's like, oh, I saw something here, it is a way to fix it. Okay, uh, and then other things, um, I wanted to show one video and then um, also this quote. So I'm gonna go yeah. to this quote and then I'm gonna um, play this video that Jepler did. So uh, in case you were wondering, how do we do things at Adafruit? Well, this translated tweet, I think, is uh, pretty accurate. Maybe there's a magic girl in Adafruit. CircuitPython can easily play wave music data. That's not all. If, once you have a magic girl, you can do all sorts of stuff. Magic girl can also play MP3 files, by the way. Yeah. And then here's a video. I was thinking about the RGB matrix displays and realized that while I know that the protomatter code CircuitPython uses to draw them works by scanning the LEDs row by row, I didn't know what that looks like. Normally, the matrix is scanned so quickly that our eyes can't see it. I think the target rate is 250 hertz. So if I wanted to see it in action, I need a high-speed camera. Or would I? I realized that I could just change the source code so that the scan was much slower. So far, we've been looking at the regular image, but with the press of a key, I can switch it to an ultra-low scan rate. Notice how the lines are drawn in pairs, and since the display has 16 lines on it, this makes the scan rate 1 8 Each line gets drawn several times with different values. This relates to the binary representation of the RGB pixel values. I think I prefer how it looks normally. Don't you? And that's our Python on hardware news for the Mika, week. Thank you. Okay.